so a couple of months ago we started the workshop banter challenge the first and hopefully first of many challenges which was all about building a project using one palette i don't know about you matt but i was overwhelmed with how many entries we had oh so many and so many great ones yeah i counted between 50 and 60 in total which was way more than i expected considering we haven't got a huge listener base or whatever the word is so thanks ever so much for everyone who participated in the challenge we you know hope you really enjoyed it we certainly enjoyed seeing all of the entries come in and i guess the only other thing i wanted to say was really sorry if we missed reposting any um because it just got a bit unwieldy (laughs) And also, we had some real technical problems finding them all. Uh, because if you used hashtag workshop banter challenge, which is what we obviously said to do, it turns out that isn't that searchable anymore. So if you type in hashtag workshop banter challenge into YouTube, you expect to see all of the challenge entries, but you don't. You just get a load of other recommendations. So it was tricky to track them all down. And if we've missed any and you want your project to be reposted by us on our Instagram, just get in touch and we'll obviously do that retrospectively. No, I was, I was, I was going to really say all the same things you said, that I was very worried that we'd miss things because actually Instagram as well, even every day I would go on there and then sort by latest mm. and it didn't seem to work. Yeah. It, and there was so when I was re looking through things this week, there was ones that I'd missed. Never seen before. Yeah, I yeah. So I tried thing. to like heart and so, so people had seen that I'd seen everything but missed them. So really did try and see everything. Yeah. But yeah, if I haven't, I do apologize. There are also a few entries that I think perhaps didn't listen to the rules, but let's not be too sticklerish about that. Um Yeah. I mean, I broke the walls straight away in mine. <laughs> That's true. But yeah, I think there were some that perhaps didn't just use one palette. But, you know, let's not worry about that stuff. purpose of the whole challenge was just around inspiration, really, for others. And I, I certainly felt inspired by some of the things that I saw. The other thing I just wanted to say quickly is thanks to everyone who went the extra mile and, and put out YouTube videos as well. Um, I, th- I counted nine of them that I could find. Whether there are more, I don't know. Um, there was Little Falls Workshop that made a really nice stool. Um, one of the things I really liked about that was how he pretty much seemed to use every part of the palette. Benjamin Hammond at the mill made an oak palette wood storage crate. Martin Murray made some ornamental flowers, sort of a bandsaw project. As usual, injected his humour into the video, which was really good to see. From the palette shed made a laminated side table. Backyard Chippy made a spice rack. Coins to collect made a piggy bank. There was an apiary ornament, which was a new thing for me. Apparently that's some kind of beekeeping thing. That was by MPLM Workshop. And I'm going to make made a garden gate. And we'll leave links to all of those in the show notes. In fact, I missed one (laughs) on my list. Sorry, useless to useful made a hat and coat stand as well. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that hat and coat stands are very close to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Have you still got any of those? I do, yeah. And, I, and they've become so precious that I don't really know what to do with them now. <laughs> the key to your whole channel, those. Yeah. It's a bit like when the ravens leave the Tower of London, that the monarchy will fall or something. And you're, <laughs> yeah. you're like that with coat stands. So as you said, this was our first time doing a challenge. So we've definitely, we've learned a lot on doing it and maybe... All, all these entries in different places that we can't find was we didn't really think it through but we'll do better next time yes we'll learn um, from our mistakes maybe that'd be another thing as well people could comment on like what the next challenge should be yeah that would be great yeah even though we're probably not going to do one for another I think a year is a good it could be a while yeah I've always wanted to do a challenge that was based around salvaging something that, that you've found mm-hmm. but it's a bit of a vague thing isn't it yeah and also i don't know how achievable it would be for everyone because i think if you live in the city center or close to a city it's usually easy to stumble across things in skips and things like that whereas if you live more rural it can be quite tricky but even at a boot sale i would bought some yeah. rusty things last week mm. so you can you know for a very small amount of money and uh, you can do them up and I say I go to charity shops and I'll yeah. cycle a bit of furniture. In fact, I went to one the other day, a massive out-of-town warehouse one. 
and they've really kind of tapped into their market. They had a wall of chalk paint, so they're selling the oh. furniture, and then obviously they know that people what people are going to do with it. Yeah, there are some organisations I've seen that remix paint colours, but um, from salvaged pots mm. of paint, which I think is such a good idea because how much paint just gets discarded because yeah. you get to the end of the pot and there's still a little bit left, and what do you do yeah. with it? I went to a, a town the other day, and there was this thing called the Eco Store. Mm in the town centre, it must have been a Woolworths or something big at one point. And we went in there, and it's full of crafting supplies, and then it had a members-only section where you join for £10 a month, and you can pick, like, five items a month from it. And you weren't allowed down the aisle, but it was having a good little look from the end. Like, bags of leather offcuts, tins and tins and tins of half-empty paint. Yeah. Like, wow, what a great resource. If, That's um, awesome. If I was local. More of that, please. We need yeah. more of that. So I don't know how many you picked out, Matt, because obviously initially I think we said we'd pick our three or five favourites or something like that, but then it seemed pointless to limit it to that if there were more that we wanted to call out as being ones that we were really excited by or inspired by. They're all good. There's there's not yeah. one thing, I think, I don't want to be rude, but I am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you look at people's woodwork and like, oh, well, that's, that's a bit rubbish. <laughs> but there's there's nothing that is a not a good project so it's 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 very hard i, I think it'd be interesting to see how much crossover there is yeah. even when we pick our um our recommended watches at the end we often have gone for the same thing yeah hit us with a not your favorite but one of your call outs then okay this one i think is i find the most impressive and it's the vertical chess set Yes, yeah. I made a vertical chess board years ago, but I didn't make the pieces. Mm. A lot of hours went into that, I bet. A lot of hours, and it's a yeah, it's really nice-looking thing. As in, you'd just be happy to have it on your wall as a piece of art. Mm. I, th- I really like that. It is by 9.5 Woodworks. Awesome. One for me would have been the DRB London um, post, which was a birdhouse, really ornate little thing i mean again the hours that went into that it was absolutely beautiful again you wouldn't know it's pallet wood would you you wouldn't know although you can see some of the staining you know that kind of weird black staining you often get on pallet wood yeah you can see that in the base um which is interesting but yeah the only thing i worry about is how long it'll last out outside because if i made something that splendid i'd be worried about letting it get weathered <laughs> Yeah, I, I do like the shingles or the cladding. I don't know what you'd call it, but that, yeah. that's really nice. Okay, this, in a way, is really simple, but it's made me think of palettes in kind of a different way. Walton Woodman, I think I'm saying that right, and it's just a shelf for his son that kind of fits into an alcove. And so it's just loads of strips of palette wood laminated together, but it looks looks lovely and he's put a curve on it it doesn't you look at it you wouldn't go it's pallet wood really nice looking piece of wood mm. as a, a lot of the projects look like pallet wood which yeah. i love that rustic kind of style and lean into the whole pallet wood aesthetic and other things are just going no i'm just going to treat pallet wood like normal wood yeah and make something so i just it's yeah it's one flat piece of wood but i like it yeah i also really liked the bread bin by Darren Twig, um, which had like a, I think you call it a tambour door, where it's made up of multiple pieces, but it all kind of folds up as one, which yeah. allows it to curve around a shape. Have really you cool. ever done um, a tambour? I haven't, no. I'd love to. I'd love to as well. There's loads of great videos on it, isn't there? Yeah. Because you, do you put a fabric backing, don't you, to the... Yeah, to pieces. allow it to act as a hinge kind of thing. Um, yeah. And it's, it just looks like, like something that's really satisfying to do and um, and perhaps isn't as difficult as it appears to be. I'm not oh. sure. <laughs> I'll save my judgment until I've tried yeah. it. <laughs> I'll let you do it first. I think it's very much your aesthetic as well. It's very mid-century. Yeah, love it. No, it's a very nice piece. And again, you wouldn't know that was pallet wood. Another one that I really liked was uh, the modern kind of sleek coffee table by Steve Bell. Um, that just looked fantastic. 
that's in my list as well. I really like the black legs against the yeah. pallet wood slats. Yeah, it, it looks it looks absolutely stunning. Um, yeah, you'd pay a lot of money for that in a shop, I think. Yeah. I, he might have broken the rules. <laughs> I don't know. You never can tell. You, yeah, if, especially if you've got one of those big... The really long pallets. Yeah, the long pallets. Yeah. I saw a couple of people using those long pallets. I think one of the YouTube videos as well, um, he was using one of the long ones. Yeah, they're the best ones to get. They are. I've, I've only had one, but I could almost pull the slats off with my hands as well. Yeah, it's easy. Like, like, it's so much wood and it comes apart flawlessly. Like These are dream pallets. <laughs> so we're talking about workbenches and I want one that's on casters. Oh, this is one we've reposted. Uh, so John has made that and uh, yeah it's just he's found some pallets with I don't know what you call them but the really chunky bits of wood in between that he's managed to use those for legs and then a pallet top stretchers are they called I don't know yeah yeah it's I actually really like how rustic it looks yeah the wood's got character to it but yeah I'm tempted to make something like that for myself just because I want to be able to move it around easily. Actually, he did a couple of other entries as well. He made a, um, a mud kitchen that looks nice and some raised beds. Oh, wow. But I think the, the bench is definitely my favourite. From one John to another John, um, I really liked the John Wiseman um, pallet wood stool, but he's used the blocks as the top of the stool and kind of shaped them so that they're rounded and they just look almost like cushion-like. Almost like a Barcelona chair style. I just thought it was such a creative way of um, of utilising the parts from a palette that aren't usually used. So I really like that one. Yeah, I always throw them on the firewood pile, those mm. bits. But to have, there's a lot of work to have rounded off those corners yeah. and got them all the same size. And they're nice hairpin legs as well. They look like they're like bronzed or rusted. They're not just the standard black. Yeah, that's a really nice piece. Um, I've got another one which I had to call out purely just because it is a cat house um, for the cats called Bruno and Rolo or Rollo, I'm not sure, um, but that was by Bruno Fernandez and it just looks like a really nice, nicely made cat house. It's kind of reminiscent of when I made a dog house, which is one of the first projects I made on the channel. But when I saw this, I thought, oh, wow, it looks really similar to what I made. Um, but yeah, really cool. Nice little outside place for the cats to hide. No, that is nice. This is something that's really simple. Simon Edbin. Yeah, sorry, probably saying your name wrong. Just um, a dovetailed uh, hand tool tray. Mm. Really pretty little thing. And um, I'm tempted to make some. I think uh, these little storage boxes that stack up are a great idea. Yeah. And a perfect use of... A pallet. Smaller projects are just so much easier to make look nice because you can kind of cut out the nail holes and knots and imperfections, can't you? Yeah. Uh, so this is, I think, my last one. This is the step stool by Howitt John. Yeah. Um, it it kind of has some industrial looking hinges and it folds out, and it's just one of those things that just looks like it's really useful around the house, but it looks great as well. It's not something you'd want to hide in a corner. You could have it out on display because it just looks excellent and uh i want one of those <laughs> yeah it's nice favorite one is jovic workshop and this little tiny end table to go on the side of the sofa yeah it's it, uh it looks like it's been india inked yeah um i'm pretty sure it has because it's got a distinctive look which i'm a big fan of just the way it's it's curved all the bits are curved yeah just to put one drink on so no good if you've got cats or a child because this is a delicate little thing that i can imagine me sitting there with my nice glass of whiskey resting on that little end table i like it i'm tempted to make one yeah and a really handy thing to have in a compact tight space as well i should imagine brilliant project and it makes you think that sofas are badly designed like why is there not something like that just built onto the end of the sofa yeah i want to always put my tea down Maybe we should build a sofa. <laughs> it's it's. I've looked at building things like that, and I'm sure mm. you have because you built some garden furniture. It's the price of the cushions. Yes, that's always the problem, isn't it? You're paying more than what you'd pay for a sofa. 
I think I've seen Benjamin Ueda on YouTube, Homemade Modern. He's made multiple sofas over the years. Um, and he's, I think he started his own cushion company yeah. or something. Because obviously it was bothering him that much. That <laughs> I was in Dunelm the other day and they had some massive square cushions that would look like, they almost used like bean bags, I think. You threw them on the floor. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's almost armchair pad size. So if you bought two of those and built an armchair around one being on the seat and one being the back, then I could, because I want like an Urkel armchair. Yeah. And I just didn't realise how expensive they are. Mm. But it'd be an interesting project. But it's one of those things I've got to have time because I'm not going to knock out an Urkel armchair in one week. No. My favourite one. I don't know if you saw this one or not, but it was by Ben at underscore Studio Yan. He did a video about this as well, but it was an Instagram video. And the video was fantastic as well. But the project was an iPad and accessories case. It's going to be difficult to explain, but it's kind of like an oval shaped, really nicely designed piece. Um, lots of curves, lots of work has gone into it. It fits his headphones in, it fits all sorts of stuff, it's hinged, it opens up and then you, I think it doubles up as a stand. But it's just fantastic. Uh, so that was my personal favourite. I just thought it was brilliant. I, ha- I totally had missed it. I hadn't liked it. Yeah, it's stunning. And so I've missed the video now because I've had a look. It's, it's not saved. I think I might have got to it yesterday to refresh my memory. Yeah, I have. We'll we'll do a list of all of the ones oh, that we've called I, out. I'm watching it now. Oh, cool. It's got a lovely um, old start right drill press as well. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's this is... This is a good pick, Keith. I think you might have picked the most technically skilled build out of them all. Yeah, I thought it was fantastic. Great great craftsmanship um, and a really cool project. Yeah, I'm watching this thinking, no, I couldn't build this. No, I don't think I could. I think I would give myself too many headaches with this. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. All those, to work out the angles of each piece... Yeah, and then to have created the angles with a hand plane, and he made his own handle out of a scrap piece of metal as well, which I just thought was cool. Yeah, no, that's a very good, very good top pick. Awesome. So yeah, like we said at the start, thanks ever so much to everyone who um, participated, and onwards to the next one. Yeah, everyone's a w- winner, really. Yes, everyone's a winner for sure. No, it's fun, and um, I can't remember what you made, Keith. That's terrible. I made a, oh, I made a box that's actually in the chair in front of me. Was it a Dovetails? It's a Dovetail box, yeah. yeah. One day I'm going to do a video of me having a go. You keep saying that, Matt, but I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous. It's it's. I do show my mistakes because there is a lot of mistakes in things I do. But I'm nervous about just going, this is me having a go at doing something first time and it it might just be embarrassing. Remind us what your project was as a table. I I cheated because <laughs> I had a herringbone pattern table, used all the all the wood from one pallet for the herringbone, but I needed a sub base, so I did use a bit of ply off a plywood pallet for that. So I'm disqualified straight away. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm sure I would have won. Did we offer any sort of prize? I can't remember. We offered the recognition of the workshop banter community which is the highest prize you can get absolutely so yeah underscore studio yan and jorvik workshop uh, it is jorvik not jorvik not sure how to pronounce it but sorry if we've butchered any names throughout this i'm sure we we did but uh, i definitely will have but no it's been great thank you yes thank you very much and i think uh, we didn't know how interested people will be but Mm. we're blown away by the interest so we would definitely think of a next one for another next summer and probably we announced it and then we're like right we're going to go through the winners in two months but actually trying to source materials and do it and maybe choose video it's maybe we'll give people a little more notice and time that's a good idea yeah we should definitely do that we're making it up as we go along which i'm sure is very obvious to everyone (laughs) We should give ourselves more time as well, because I I panicked. I I was like, I don't know how I'm going to fit this in. (laughs) Yes, we should have started the challenge with our entries. 
So maybe next time we do a challenge, we'll do that and hopefully get a bit more engagement. Not that we've, we're disappointed by the amount of engagement that this one has had, because it's been amazing. No. But what we'll probably do is not write that bit down and then totally forget and mm. uh, do it wrong again next time. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like us. Yeah. Obviously, this was the first episode after quite some time, but we do now have two more episodes recorded, so stay tuned for those over the coming weeks. Obviously, at the moment, we're having to focus on the things that bring in money. Unfortunately, the podcast is continuously running at a loss, but it's something that we really enjoy doing. So if you'd like to help support the show, please do consider signing up on Patreon. Links are in the show notes, and thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.